Darktable 3.4 has a new module called Color Calibration, and there's quite a lot to cover. So again, I'm going to break it up into two episodes. This will be part one. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 82 of Understanding Darktable. To my mind, the color calibration module has two personalities. On one hand, it replaces the now deprecated channel mixer module. So that's one personality. And its other personality is as a supplement to the legacy white balance module. In this episode, we're just going to look at the first of those two personalities using the new color calibration module as a channel mixer. Now, before we start, I do just quickly want to revisit for the benefit of those people who've come straight to this video without watching the Darktable 3.4 new features videos. Uh, in the preferences and under processing, we now have a new entry auto apply chromatic adaptation defaults. Now this pertains to the color calibration module specifically. The default option here is legacy. So when you first install Darktable, this will be set to legacy. And what that means is that when you either import a new image or reset the history stack on an image you've already got in your library. The what legacy white balance module will be applied as per usual and it will default to whatever was the white balance set in camera at the time of exposure. The color calibration module will not be added to your list of active modules. That's the legacy mode. If you change this to modern, what you are saying to Darktable is whenever I import a new image or whenever I reset the history on an image I've already got in my library, I want you to set the legacy white balance module to a new option, which we'll look at in just a sec, uh, called camera reference. And I want you to activate the color calibration module. And we'll go into that a little bit more in episode 83, but I did just want to cover it for anyone who didn't watch the new features videos. Okay, so as you can tell, I have it set to modern, so I'm using the color calibration module by default for all of my processing from this point forward. So to use the color calibration module as a channel mixer, I have chosen this image of Desiree that I shot a few years ago. And what I've done is simply hit the reset parameters button in the history stack. And as you can see, all of the regular things get applied, color calibration is turned on. And because I've got a scene referred workflow set in preferences as well, it also means filmic and exposure uh, set to active as well. So that is the image straight out of camera. Now, if we look at the active modules, we will see that the white balance module has had a little bit of a UI refresh with Darktable 3.4. We now have these four icons, one for the white balance as shot in camera, one for set the white balance detected from an area. And if we click on that, we will get the white rectangle that takes up 99% of the frame. Uh, and so Darktable will do its best to read the white balance from the image itself. We then have a user modified section where you can set your own color temperature if you have a specific reason for wanting to do that. And then we have this new one, camera reference point. In most cases, it should be D65. Now, I will confess that D65 is a whole new language to me. I went and did a bunch of reading and I kind of understood some of it and sort of eyes glazed over for a lot of it. 
However, I did find an interesting discussion on photo.net and I will put a link to that in the description down below. So if you really want to get into the weeds on illuminance, uh, then by all means hit that link and go and read up. Um, some interesting stuff in there and I probably need to go and revisit it. But just understand that if you choose modern as the preference for chromatic adaptation transform in preferences, then this legacy white balance module will be set to camera reference or D65, and then the color calibration module will do its thing. Now, on this first tab, the chromatic adaptation transform, if we want to use the color calibration module as a channel mixer, we basically want to set the adaptation to none. And that is basically then just turning off this tab, essentially. It's removing all of the options that are there with the exception of the gamut compression. And so now what we've got is an R channel, a G channel, and a B channel, and they are your old, now deprecated, channel mixer. Now, I don't fully understand the reasons for why the old channel mixer was deprecated. I think it was something to do with the the science and the color space in which it worked. I think it assumed that you were working in an sRGB color space all of the time. And obviously these days that's not necessarily the case. And the color calibration module will work in an unbounded color space uh, throughout its little part of the pixel pipe. And that basically means you've got more tones and colors and hues and things to work with. That's my understanding. Don't shoot me if I'm wrong. Okay, so how does this work? Well, basically each of these tabs, so R for red, G for green, B for blue, represents the output of that particular color channel. And by default, the input values to each of those outputs is red is at one and green and blue are at zero. On the green channel, the green input is at one, red and blue are at zero. And on the blue channel, the blue channel is inputting at one and red and green are inputting at zero. So the idea is, is that you can now create any mix for the output of the red channel simply by choosing to readjust these sliders. Now, I am not going to pretend to know how to use this in an efficient manner because I never used the channel mixer either. I understand the concept, but I just, I recognize that it's way too powerful a tool for my limited understanding and I would probably do more damage than good if I was to muck around with it. Uh, if you want to reset these, you can just double click on the sliders. That's nothing new. Uh, and that will set everything back to default values. You'll then notice there is a colorful tab, a brightness tab, and a gray tab. Now, the colorfulness tab is there to allow you to either accentuate or attenuate the intensity of anything you did on the R, G, and B tabs. So for example, if I was to come and do something absolutely horrendous here, I have no idea what I'm doing, but let's just say I had done this as a new mix for my red channel, I could go to the colorfulness tab and this input red slider will allow me to turn down the effect of that red channel or crank up the effect of that red channel. And then the same applies for whatever you do on the green channel. You would, you would then have the ability to attenuate or accentuate that green channel output on this green slider here. And then the same for the blue channel. You'll notice at the bottom here a checkbox for normalize channels. If you activate that, then regardless of what you might dial in across these three sliders, all of those values will be summed together and then divided back to a value of one. So essentially, even though you might have numbers that don't necessarily add up to 1.0, whatever values you have 
you know, applied across these three sliders will be correlated against each other so that the output saturation is consistent with the input saturation. It's just that the channel mix will be a little bit different. Next up, we've got the brightness tab. I am just going to reset these. And the brightness tab, as the name suggests, simply allows us to alter the intensity or the luminosity of each of our red, green, and blue channels. So we can make our red channel darker or brighter. We can make our green channel darker. Whoa, that's funky. Uh, or brighter. <laughs> or our blue channel darker. Whoa, it's like Morticia. Uh, or brighter. And again, the normalized channels checkbox is there to basically average out whatever values you may have entered across these three sliders to then basically end up with a value of one across those three values so that the output luminosity hasn't changed from the input luminosity, but the luminosity of the individual channels has been skewed from where it was at the input stage. Hopefully that makes sense. And then finally, we've got the gray tab. And this is where you will do your monochrome mixes of color images. Now, the moment you move any of these sliders away from their default positions at the far left, your image will basically go black. And it is then a case of deciding how much of each of the three primary channels you want to introduce into your monochrome mix. Now, sure, you can just drag the sliders around and find what looks good for you, or you can check out the new presets that Aurelian has created here. He did mention in his video that he was not entirely happy with the black and white presets that existed in the old channel mixer module, uh, and he did confess that he made those up many years ago when he knew less than he knows now and he doesn't feel today in early 2021 that those presets were as accurate as they should have been and he believes that these new presets that he's come up with for the color calibration module are far more representative of the film stocks that they are named after. So if you did use the old channel mixer module for some of your past processing exploits, it might be worth going back and particularly if you were working off raw files, create duplicates, disable the channel mixer, enable the color calibration module, and maybe try some of these presets and just see whether or not you feel that these presets are a better representation of the black and white film stock they're trying to emulate than the presets which were in the old channel mixer module. Now I will just mention, because the old channel mixer module has been deprecated, it means that you won't naturally find that module available in the UI of Darktable anymore. However, if you did watch the videos on new features, you would have seen me cover the new modules presets window. And within there, there is a preset of grouped uh, modules for deprecated modules. So even if you do want to keep using the channel mixer module, you can access it from there if you want to. But I think the recommendation is if you want to do channel mixing trickery today, avoid the old channel mixer module and go with the new color calibration module. Alrighty, I am going to leave it there for this episode. And in episode 83, we will look at using the color calibration module as a supplement to the legacy white balance module. Looking forward to it. All right, catch you in the next one.